Welcome back, StarCraft fans. I am Niokin. Of course, joining me is Scan. Today is going to be Group E. We've got a really nice lineup today. It's going to be Shark versus Gamo to start us off. And then we've got Bisu versus Organ. So, Scan, what are your thoughts on today's group? I think it's going to be the most exciting group out of six groups because we got one of the best products player Bisu in it and you know uh, Sharp is also known as a top three top a top three term player right now in Korean scene so it's gonna be a very interesting match in my opinion so it looks like we're gonna be moving on to players interview saying hello to each other uh, last season, ASL season 10, I was uh, I got eliminated uh, super early, so I was a bit disappointed with myself. But in this season, ASL season 11, I would I would like to. I would like to advance to round of 16 and go up and achieve more higher goal. Hi Gamo, and you are qualified beating Hero in ASL qualifiers in day 1. And how do you feel about your play? Gamo is responding that he's getting old. His age is more than 30 I believe he's not sure about his skill but when he was playing the qualifiers it was a Zerg vs Zerg, uh, Zerg, Zerg matchup on a ASO qualifier final and he felt confident so Gemo, Gemo is not sure whether he's going to be advancing into round of 16, but he would like to, he would like to be satisfied with his gameplay, even even if he gets eliminated in round of 24. There's quite a lot of fans. Quite a lot of fans are not sure how well you're going to be playing in round of 24 sharp. Any words towards to your fan and their expectation how, how you're going to be performing in your game? And sharp is, going, sharp is answering the question as a... Previously, his optimization wasn't that great. He was a bit emotional when he was playing his game but now he's kinda letting it go and focusing on more of a optimization and changing up his play style as a tier 4 player Gamo there's two Terran players and one Prados in your group How's your preparation? It was very tough. When we say Bisu, he's one of the best Prados who's really good at Pro Prados vs Zerg matchup. And when we hear Piano, he's a specialist of a Terran vs Zerg matchup. So, I am more prepared with the build order strategies. Is there anything specific or unique unique build that no one does only except you? I prepared a lot and going to find their uh, weaknesses and break <coughs> break the point and win the game. How desperate are you in 2021 Sharp? The year has been changing, my age is going up. It's... I feel... Uh, how should I word it? I feel... I, if I keep saying desperate, trying to achieve higher goal in tournaments, I feel like I'm gonna be letting my uh, fans down, so... 
I am changing my mindset starting over from the beginning starting from the bottom to the top Question to Gemo. This is your. Uh, you haven't you haven't played in a stage game for a long time. Uh, did I lose connection? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Hello, mm -hmm. is my mic working? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, what's real? What's going on with my internet? I don't understand. Okay, last, last word before you go into the game. I'm pretty sure everyone is prepared and try to win the game, win the game and advance into round of 15. <laughs> and Gemma, last word. I feel like I'm gonna be losing and getting eliminated easily. I think if other players are more, uh, if other players are having anxiety and thinking that they're not going to be playing well, I think I will have higher chance to win the game and advance into round of 16. Hello, Bisu, and hello, Piano. I watched I watched best uh, bestest game. Uh, when was it? It wasn't. Was it in group? Was it in group C? Yeah, Best was not playing really well. He, I was thinking that Best will be advancing into round of 16 as the first player in his group, but he lost his game. So I kind of admit that I was not playing really well last season. A lot of people are thinking people made an uh, easy group of his ASL qualifier, but it, it really isn't. It really isn't. When I looked at round of uh, 24 group E, it's not going to be an easy group for me to advance into round of 16. If I win the first game, I think I will, I will advance into round of 16 as the first player in the group. But if I lose, I'm, I'm not sure I'll be maybe moving down into decider match and either getting into round of 16 as a second player in the group or getting eliminated in round of 24. Piano, we are expecting that you are going to prepare a lot of... You are going to prepare a lot for your uh, first game because it's going to be playing against Bisu, your turn versus uh, Prados matchup. Okay, uh, Piano really wants to jump into the game really He wants to... He's ready to play right now. A lot of fans are expecting you are going to climb up a lot in this tournament. And how do you feel? I was playing really well when I came to stream on Africa platform. But the longer it goes and start uh, playing StarCraft for a longer time, other players are playing really well and I feel like I am not playing well as before. 
4강에 올라가시면 또 우승에 대한 욕심이 생기실 것 같은 김태경 선수라는 생각이 드는데요. If I advance into round of 16, I think I will. 때문에 우승은 솔직히 무리예요. My my goal is to achieve into a semi-final in this uh, ASL season 11. Last season, I got eliminated in a quarter-final. And that was my uh, highest career in this ASL. So that is his going to be his goal. And Piano is saying... Yeah, I'm lost. <laughs> I couldn't keep up listening to Piano's. Uh, Piano was saying he feels comfortable with uh, some specific matchup. So one of the questions to Bisu, a fan asked you that uh, every time when you're not playing really well on stream, you're saying your hands are not really moving. Do you think you can perform really well today? And how well are you going to be moving your hands? I feel my hands are fine today. Uh, Piano, you have been you have been casting lots of games like KCM, uh, Race War, and other tournaments as well, and you've been analyzing, watching other specific players, the play style. Do you think? Is there any uh, advantage as being a caster plus being a player? Oh my god, I lost connection again. Oh, this is why it's so bad. Oh, I'm not going to Hello, hello. 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 I am freaking out with my internet. Uh, I'm not touching anything. I keep losing my connection for some reason. This is really weird. 하식스와 LG 울트라기어가 함께하는 ASL 시즌 11, 24강 2조 경기 과연 오늘의 조에서 16강에 진출할 두 명의 선수는 누가 될지 24강 2조 경기 지금 바로 만나보시죠. Well, the interviews are over, and now we're going to be getting into our first match of the day. It is going to be Sharp versus Gamo, a turn versus Zerg. Seemed like Sharp was feeling a bit more confident this season. I know lately Sharp has kind of fallen off, right? Like, I, I noticed that he was missing from KCM quite often. Okay, uh, stream is back on. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, stream is back on. Uh, I am. Okay. I am freaking out with my internet. I don't know what's wrong. So it looks uh -huh. like yeah, we are done with the interview, and the first game is going to be uh, Bisu versus Gamo, as you said. And yeah, yeah, Sharp versus Gamo is going to be coming up. So Terra versus Zerg. So I, I was saying how Sharp has kind of fallen off. I think in the past few months, I know a lot of people uh, missed him from KCM. Like he's been replaced by players like Rush and Sorry in KCM. So what are your expectations for him going up against Gamo? What are my expectations of uh, Gamo versus uh, who yeah, was Sharp? Sharp? I yeah. think Gamo really likes to play aggressive. He really likes to use early Zergling and try to make a messy game before he makes a couple of Mutalists. So either Sharp is not going to be defending really well against Gamo Zergling or he will defend easily and just manage to keep up the game tempo and maybe just destroy him in the first game who knows that could definitely be the case i think they were saying that gamo was a tier four player and it's gonna be a bit of a challenge i think for gamo to make it out of this group but he does have a good shot uh, sharp when i was watching him be hot about a year or a year and a half ago like when he beat flash or did he beat flash I think there was that crazy game on Ground Zero where Sharp was put on the map at that oh, point. Oh, that was in... I think that was in a MPL, the... What is it? Moo Pro League in four or five years ago, I believe. I think no, that's... It, 
It was definitely within the past two years because it was on Ground Zero and it was after Remastered came out. And Sharp really put on a show, even though I think he still lost. His TVT was really good, but his TVZ, I think, has always been his weakest, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I think Gamo has a decent <laughs> shot. For me, the question is who gets second? Because I think everybody looks at this and says, okay, Bisu, clear favorite. But then the question is, is who's second place here? So... I have a feeling I have a feeling Oregon might be the second player who's going to be advancing into round of 16 in this group E because even though Sharp has fantastic turn versus turn matchup but uh, I feel like he's not in I feel like he's not in his shape it says in it says that he is in tier 1 but I feel like he belongs in tier 2 most likely yeah, I'm looking at this tier list and how Sharp is tier 1 and Bisu's tier 2 is kind of beyond me, yet that is the case. It looks like we're going to get a look at the player profiles for Sharp. He's got pretty good stats across the board. His worst matchup is TVP, surprisingly, below, or below his TVZ, because really I thought his TVZ was his uh, lowest uh, particular matchup. Now, as we both are kind of saying, Sharp is kind of slumping lately so i think these statistics are a bit of uh deceptive but we'll see if he can bring it back versus somebody like gamo he's done very well overall tier one as you mentioned yeah he has a really fantastic record on a turn versus turn matchup or a uh, piano should not be underestimating sharp even though sharp is not uh playing well recently but you know the record is proving he is a good player and we are now moving into Gamo's uh, stats. I think this is his uh, third time qualifying into ASL. His Zerg vs. Terra matchup is going to be only a 50% win rate. Only two games, small sample data. But who knows, he might change. He might change it later and win the game. Yeah, not a lot of history for Gamo in the ASL. You're talking about how we need to really be watching out for Piano. Piano, for me, is kind of the player that's changed his style a lot because thinking a long time in the past, Piano does not play like he used to. Uh, back then, he was a guy that built, like, mass tanks versus Zerg. He was one of the first people to start building three factories and go mass tanks. Oh, and now Piano <laughs> loves to go dropship. Yeah, you remember those days? Yeah, yeah. So he's changed his style completely. I'm curious how he's going to perform versus uh, Gamo because, of course, Gamo is very strong. But we're going to have to wait for that matchup, if if that even happens, because he's facing off against Bisu. <coughs> so it looks, looks like, yeah, we are moving into the first game. And let me turn on the sound. Yeah, so our first matchup is, again, going to be on Eclipse. It's going to be a Terran versus Zerg. It is Sharp versus Gamo to kick us off with Group E. In the bottom left are Green Terran. It is Sharp. In the top right are Bluish Gray Zerg. It is Gamo. Now, as we were saying, that Sharp is kind of slumping a bit, and I think that's going to put him near around similar level for Gamo. I still favor Sharp because I think Sharp is a bit better, but this should be a close matchup. Now, again, Eclipse, we've got TVZ. Do you think this is a map that Sharp's going to wall, or is he somebody that just likes to build racks in his bases, just play, you know, standard uh, TVZ here? I am not sure, but a lot of Terran players like to start with the two supply depot with the single barracks wall at the natural, because if you have those two supply depot, one racks wall at the natural, you can literally skip all those uh, defense resource like making a bunker making a turret all those kind of stuff you can skip it in the early early game before the middle list pops so there is that depot placement as we were expecting now this is a fast scout and this fast scout makes me wonder if gamo might potentially go three hatch before pool or something ridiculous like that he's gonna get in here 
right after the barrack started. And I wonder if that's going to trigger a, a reaction from Sharp. Is he going to deviate? Is he going to, you know, go fast gas? Is he worried about an early pool coming? Because this is so fast. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a nine nine drone scout by Gemo. And the reason why Gemo is doing the nine uh, nine drone scout is because it's a two player map. Some Tempers likes to go with the A Rex opening, and also a lot of Tempers like to go with the wall at the natural. But if you do nine drone scout, uh, you can pretty much buy quite a lot of time. Look at this. Uh, Sharp has pulled out about two extra SCV just to defend this nine drone scout right now, and losing lots of mining time. Yeah, and even though this scout is super fast, you can see that Gamo built an extra drone before building the pool. And as I mentioned, he may not even build a pool. It looks like in his main, that's what he's going to do. Also, if you looked at the drone timing, he had 230 minerals right, right when the drone got there. It would allow him the option to go for a 12 pool opener, which is an am amazing versus an 8 racks. And he's dealt so much damage with this single drone. Both SCVs are extremely low. It's finally going to get pushed back. But Sharp's going to have to send down. Oh, nope. He's just going to use that SCV to build the second depot. But nicely done from Gamo. Now, something that we have to point out, of course, is Gamo. No gas in his main. So this is going to be a three hatch build. It looks like probably top middle is where he's going to place it. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be a third hatchery at the 12 o'clock, most likely. He's sending the drone, but the, also the SCV is also, uh, standing at the 12 o'clock side. But Sharp is not building the command center. He's also losing lots of timing. His, his uh, optimization, he said on the interview that he focused on the optimization, but he's somewhat messed up with the optimization in early game. His command center is a bit late right now. Well, for me, all eyes is on that gas timing for Sharp because it has not come down yet. Looks like it's potentially about to start. No, instead he's going to put down a second barracks. Oh, no, he's not. He did build the gas. Got you baited. Second barracks, I think, is going to be coming down pretty soon. Meanwhile, Gamo just now started his gas. Oh, that was a second barracks. Yeah, it looks okay, like... So this... Yeah, this is going to be a two racks academy because he has seen there's going to be the third hatchery at the third base. And he definitely wants to force Zerg to make a sunken colony at the nature and the third base at the same time as soon as he gets the marine medic out. So this is going to be a quick follow-up from Sharp. He's going to try and put pressure on to not just the Nat, but also the third base, forcing out two Sunkins at each base. That is painful. One of the common follow-ups for Zerg after going for an opener like this is going to be that Ultra follow-up. So Sharp needs to be on his upgrades if he wants to go into late game versus game O. Lings are going to push this SCV. Well, nope. The SCV is going to get a full scout back up into the main. But really nothing unusual going on. It looks like that uh, scouting SCV is quite a, uh, buying quite a lot of time. And Academy is going to be uh, now finished at 4 minutes 35 seconds. And this is going to be super fast uh, Marine Medic timing by Sharp. And I think he will be ready to move out before 5 minute mark. And at that time, before 5 minute mark, the Zergling speed is not going to be complete. So if, as long as that uh, scouting SCV survives so long, he can pretty much skip all those uh, fire bat, Nora. Okay, looks like he can. He can also have. He also has an option whether he wants to do second SCV scout, but he looks like he's going to do it. But it looks like finally he's moving out at five minutes six seconds. Yes, as you mentioned, five minute move out. Now this is about fifteen to twenty seconds faster than usual. However, Sharp's marine count is extremely low. It looks like seven. Normally with a standard Marine Medic timing, you can get about 12 Marine Medic or 12 Marines and then also a couple Medics. So this is not a super powerful attack, but as you see, it does force out Sunkins very quickly. Spire is going to be finishing. Well, it's only halfway done, actually, because it's a three hatch. Well, that SCV is still alive in the main. How did that happen? Yeah, it looks like somehow that uh, second SCV scout got into Gamos main base and see how fast the Spire is. So as soon as he can see how fast that Spire is, he can literally skip that uh, second compton station. Look at it. He does not have the second compton station at the natural. He is spending all those resources for super fast factory. It's only been six minutes long. Yeah, so the fast factory, he can use this to go for a follow-up tank push before Hive completes and uh, the filer pops out. He can also just rush straight starport. We'll see what he wants Ooh, the to Marine pop medic. into. Yeah, it looks like the Marines are kind of 
you know, split off. It could have been caught pretty easily. But I love how Sharp is following up here. It's so painful to be facing a Terran player who already has, like, vessels out when your first <laughs> mutas arrive on the scene. Looks like the Lings may intercept this group of Marines. Nice reaction from Sharp to pull those back. It looks like uh, Gemma only has been using uh, four or six Zerglings total and now it's going to be making six, uh, nine Middles. And I think, yeah, it looks like he got Supply Blood because he, Sharp was lifting his uh, racks at the natural and he got the vision of it and somehow he just picked off the first over there. Well, the scan caught some of the Mutalists, so he knows it's coming. And as I mentioned, he's already rushed that factory and you can see that then an add-on is coming so he is intending to bust this is not going to be double starport vessel turret's already in position this is really not going to do much damage for gamo he's got the right amount to one shot SVs. let's see how much damage he can get done first one goes down second one well, he's not taking that much damage on his needless so that's good for him and with three bases already running that's fantastic as mentioned before common follow-up is ultras you can see the evolution chamber is already done an instant hive rush from Gamo, no Hydrogen anywhere. Yeah, looks like he's gonna be... Oh, that's gonna be a little bit of a mistake by Gamo, but he is going to be uh, focus targeting on the, one of the missile turret and picking some of the uh, SCV, but nice reaction by Sharp. He is going to defend and repairing that missile turret. And three medics are out of position, but both of the players do not know. Okay, finally, Sharp is going to be responding that medics were out of position. And as you said, the super fast Queen's Nest and going for Hive looks like there's going to be Muta into Ultra the switches. Well, this tank push is going to come so fast, and I don't think Gamo spot, uh, spotted it just yet. So this might catch him off guard. And he may be forced to react with something like Guardians because Ultras are definitely not going to be in time if Piano or if Sharp instantly goes out with two tanks. Mutas are just trying to be annoying. Picks off another SCV. There's the first. Oh my gosh. Does that. Is that tank able to get out without. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I was going to ask you if, if it can get out or not. But I. I th oh yeah, it can get out. Yeah, I see it. I see it. It just got out. Oh, okay. Thank. Thank God, because if that didn't get out, everything would just be a disaster for, for Sharp. His whole... Oh my God, he's going to lose his tank! Gotta be careful with the Seize tank. Nice control from Gamo. Not only does he spot the tank, he takes down a couple of Marines and Firebats really for free. And that tank is already softened up. I saw it had 70 health out of the 150. Ooh. There it is. There's the response to the Greater Spire. As I mentioned, Ultras would not be in time. So even if this attack fails from Sharp, at least it forced a lot of the gas to be used from Gamo. Yeah, it looks like Gamo's respond to this uh, super fast siege tank timing by Sharp. It's going to be a uh, Guardian most likely. And it looks like there, is, there are quite a lot of Zerglings are standing at the 9 o'clock site. But I think he might be looking for a great timing to go for the back step whenever the Marine Medics are out of position. Yeah, the Marines are getting dwindled down by those Mutalists. As mentioned, there's the Ultralist Cavern. And I didn't get a catch on when the plus one started for Sharp. So if he's delayed it at all, he will be in trouble. You can see Mass Sunken's popping out. This is a nice counterattack from Gamo. Now Sharp has to make a decision. Do I turn around? Double Firebat in the bunker. So he's not turning around. He's going to go for it. And now Gamo, Gamo has to turn around. And since all of his... Mutalists were across the map. None of them are actually being morphed into Guardians just now. Looks like he's going to try and bust the third base because there's less Sunkins, and that might be a very smart move. Yeah, I think uh, Gamo really wanted to go for the back step, but there were uh, two firebats as you mentioned. And finally, he's going to be making the Guardian at the 12 o'clock site, but will the Sunken buy the time before the Guardian pops? I am not sure. As soon as the Sunken goes into a lower HP, the Marine is going to be moving in. And now there's no Sunkins. Now Zergling is going to be a, uh, attached to the Marine Medic. And that's not the best of trade ever. Where's the Guardian? Yeah, Guardians are about to pop. Now they finally have come into play, but is it too late? Third base? I think it will be saved by these Guardians. All of these Marines are going to be taken down. Look how fast the Guardians are able to deal. The oh my gosh, that irradiate pushes half of the Guardians oh, back. No. And he ends up sniping the hatchery. And that's a massive loss for Gamo. 
Yeah, that was gonna be a that is going to be a huge loss for Gamma. And Gamma is now also splitting his guardian, the splash damaging to his own guardian. Lost to guardian, but uh, one lucky thing is that he did not lose much of drone. Yeah, he didn't lose that many drones, but lo losing the third base is painful. And morphing ten guardians there is super painful. Now the Lings may be able to cut off this uh, wow. retreating army. He does catch them, and that's a big loss. And you can look at the supplies, eighty to seventy now. And because of all those tanks being pumped out, actually there's not a lot of defense for these Guardians if they are able to sit over the ledge of the Nat, but instead, Gamo, of course, doesn't know that he's going to turn around. I think... I think Sharp does not have much of an army to defend that Guardian, but it looks like Gamo is not sure how much of a Marine Medics are sending at the Natural because he lost the first Overlord in the beginning. And now he's going to be pulling back all those Guardians for the defense. Yeah, he just does, he does just turn around and play defensive. And behind this, I don't want to say Sharp is all in. However, seven barracks, that's pretty committed. So he's going to be pumping out a ton of units and, be ta and is going to start taking his third base a lot later. Now, Guardians, you know, comboed with Ultras. I haven't seen that that often, but it's going to be a really strong comp. But that means he's most likely not going to have the Filers. So Sharp's not going to have to deal with the Orange Cloud for quite a while. I didn't catch his upgrades. I saw that the second E... Oh, he already has plus two. So that's definitely ahead of the armor upgrades for Zerg. So that's great for Terran. Right. Looks like um, Sharp was not sure whether the Guardians were coming. He made a couple of raids, but... Uh, looks like it's not going to be used against Guardian anymore because the Guardians w weren't coming. And plus two was kicked in um, a minute ago or so. And looks like... Does Gamo have armor to upgrade? I'm not sure. I want no, to he, see the upgrade. No, he didn't have it. He had uh, three armor on the ultras, but that's simply because of the ultra upgrade completing. He may have it now. Yeah, okay. So it did complete just now. It looks like Sharp has something like a 20 or 30 second arm or weapon to armor upgrade advantage. So he may be able to exploit that once plus three kicks. And you see that the Wraith do try and pick off a couple of the Guardians, but they are pushed back and one is taken down by some scourge now marines are setting up to bust this natural but that's not going to happen there's just too much defense here there's going to be a lot of marine medic uh forces are coming and merging at the center that looks like another two groups are coming from the middle i think that's going to be total five groups i think sharp is looking for a good spot to break one of the sites either it's going to be the third base or the natural but he's going to be constantly using the Iradian on the Guardian. I think he wants to climb up, up but I'm not sure this is going to be the being of abuse. It looks like there's going to be one Dark Swarm at the natural. At the same time, going to be attacked at the third base. Oh my gosh, he's going to take down the Nidus. And with the Nidus going down, that's no way for flanks to occur for the Zerg. Defilers and Ultra is going to try and hit from the back. Dark Swarm does come in, but Medics on hold position on the ramp could survive for days. Looks like this third base is going to be eliminated again. However, Sharp more than likely is going to trade the entirety of his army, but he's not going to get a lot of damage onto the actual army of... No, you gotta focus down the hatch, man! Yeah, okay, he, he will. He will get it. Thank you. Wow, I thought he was gonna let it survive. Yeah, Gamo has lost that third base, plus a lot of drones. That he, he had about uh, 15 workers at the 12 o'clock site, but now he's gonna be losing... Lots of stuff, but eventually he'll be clearing all the all those um, marine medic. But Sharp will have another three groups ready to move out soon. Yeah, this seven racks production is going to give him a lot of units. But as I said, he doesn't have a third base for a long time. You can see his main is basically mined out, and that's going to be mined out pretty soon. What Sharp did get there is he did manage to save the most of his vessels, so that's great for him. However. As I said, he didn't kill any of the Ultras, so the Ultras are going to be wrecking havoc onto this Marine Ball once they come into play, or once there's a battle in the center of the map. Also, Sharp lost a lot of medics, so he's going to have to rebuild that also. That's going to be hurting his gas quite a bit. You can see seven Ultras were out, but one Defiler is out, and Gamo's feeling confident to start taking top middle right now. It looks like Gamo is keeping up the game really well, even though he lost that uh, third base two times. But Sharp does not have much of a science vessel. If he loses all those science vessels, not using Irradiate on the uh, Ultralist nor uh, Defiler, I feel like this Ultralist is going to be very powerful in, uh, in the combat later. 
Wow, this single wraith is quite annoying. It forces a dark swarm in the center of the map, and that may have been a game-saving move because if the defiler hadn't had have gotten a dark swarm all the way at the natural, that would have been most likely doomsday because there's Ooh. not critical mass vessels. However, these irradiates are blanketing the majority of the ultras. Yeah, it looks like Sharwell's waiting for the plus three attack, and uh, uh, the observers show that a uh, marine has plus three attack, and. Yeah, all those Irradiate Ultralis were pretty much doing this splash damage and killing their own Ultralis, hurting themselves, and looks like all the Ultralis are gone now. Well, that was a big loss for Gamo. You can see it reflected in the supplies. It was, what, 100 to 80 a moment ago. Now it's 125 to 60. Seven Ultras pretty much down the drain. Meanwhile, I don't think a single Vessel went down, and also two Defilers went down. And Sharp did just scan top middle a moment ago, so he's got his eyes set on taking down that base. And without any lurkers anywhere or defiler lurker combo, this base is dead 100%. And there's nothing to even catch these vessels that are out of position at the natural. Yeah, looks like his uh, Gamo is going to be giving up that fourth base and going for the trade. He's going to be taking down and hurt Sharp's economy at the 8 o'clock side. But Sharp is going to. Go for the trade. Gonna be killing the third base as well. So this is not gonna be looking happy for Gamma because Gamma really needs another gas right now. Yeah, with both of the bases going down for Gamma, he's gonna run out of steam pretty soon. As I mentioned, Sharp is gonna run out of steam pretty soon too. However, he at least has a sizable army. Gamma has really no army. It's like one Ultra here and there, comboed with a handful of links. And you can see that this Ultra is going to fall. Meanwhile, I mean, really all that's left here is that single Ultra under Dark Swarm. Okay, I guess two Ultras. Maybe the Marines will get dwindled down a bit, but Gamo really just doesn't have an army. Yeah, Gamo is desperately trying to keep up the game with a couple of Ultralis and small size of an army. But the Marine Matic Force is so huge, I'm not sure Gamo can keep up the game anymore. Yeah, and none of the vessels got taken out. Now, does Gamo have enough? It looks like just barely three Ultras are going to be way too much DPS for these Marines and Medics. You can see that the vessels come to save the day, mass irradiate, blanketing all of the Ultralists. Now, of course, it's 110 supply to 55, but it's about to be about 45 once those Ultras pop. Third hatch, start, or third base going up again for Gamo. He just doesn't seem to be able to keep that base up and running. I think Gamo could have kept up and maybe flipped the table around if he saved that uh, third expansion when he was going for the attack at the 8 o'clock slide because when I look at the minimap Sharp, Sharp's main base and the natural is going to be it's my it's total it's pretty much mined out right now it's, Sharp is right now stuck at one base but he does have a lot of science vessels I'm not sure how Gamo is going to be dealing with those number of uh, science vessels it looks like that's going to be the GG. Well, there's the answer to dealing with the science vessels. He's just going to tap out. So Sharp wins uh, what looked like a pretty easy game for him. However, it was not that easy because if Gamo was able to keep his third base up and running, Gamo had all the tech he needed. He had Defiler, he had Ultras, he had the upgrades. But Sharp just a little too quick on his timings and he does manage to take down Gamo. That's going to send Gamo down into the loser's match. But so far, Shark looks pretty good today. Yeah, Gamo was uh, performing the game well even though he was on the downside in the early mid game. But I think he might have a potential to win the win the game on a loser's match and uh, maybe if he wins the loser match, maybe he will also win the decider match as well. Who knows? Yeah, Gamo is definitely not out of it. He looked pretty good, but Sharp just slightly better in our first match. But now, we're going to be going into probably the match that people want to see today. It's going to be Bisu versus Piano. Now, Bisu is a specialist, of course, in PvZ and PvP, but people always talk about how his PvP is a little weaker than the others. Do you think Piano has a chance to take him down? I think Piano might have a chance to beat against Bisu in uh, Eclipse because it's two-player map. 
Oh, it looks like we're gonna be moving into a commercial break, so I'll be explaining it when we are coming back to game game two. We are back. Oh, I forgot we have the advertisement for the questions. Uh, it, I think you can send your questions to ASL, right? If I remember correctly, you can write on the forums and they may get picked uh, to ask some of the players. Yeah, ask ASL. Uh, only four, four people, four, uh, four people will get selected and they will get ASL Tumblr. And and there's also an expectation event guess whether uh, which player is going to be advancing into round of 15. So only two people will guess like for that event as well. And we are going to be moving into game two. We watched our first game, uh, Sharp versus Gemo, and Sharp is waiting in a winner's match. So before we went to the break, I was talking about how P uh, Bisu is known for his PVZ and PVP. You can see, wow. Oh, I thought that was, I thought the highlight was his best matchup. But you can see, <laughs> as I said, his t PVT, of course, 58% is amazing. But it's his weakest matchup. So Piano here, what do you think of his chances versus Bisu? You know, there's a lot of uh, great Protoss players out there, but... Um... You know, if you if you divide into two different style, a, a person who likes to break the front or, or a person who likes to play, uh, what is it? Doing quite a quite a lot of uh, micro and buying sometimes like snow how snow does like river micro and buying quite a lot of time and transitioning into some other tech units. But for uh, players like Bisu or Best, they always like to break. Terran's uh, seize tank line whenever he's they are ready to move in. And so we're getting a look at the statistics for Oregon here, aka Piano, and you can see that not that many gains for him in ASL, so take his statistics with a grain of salt. However, PvP is his lowest win rate. I think this is going to be very, very tough for him because Piano these days seems to be pretty strong TVZ. I'm not too sure about his TVP. I know that he's started casting KCM, so you also have to factor that in. How much is he actually playing now that he's got other obligations? But he is a very, very good Terran player. Last season, Bisu got knocked out by JYJ, so it wouldn't surprise me if Piano takes down Bisu here, but it is going to be an uphill battle for him. Yeah, so uh, the game is going to be uh, Terran Ter versus Protoss matchup on Eclipse. And Eclipse is a uh, I should say it's a small map because there's not much of an expansion that Protoss can really take. 
as soon as you take like four bases or five ba ba five bases as a Prados, it is really hard to take the six base as a Prados because the main base is going to be mined out, natural is going to be mined out. You're going to be pretty much stuck at three base mining, and Terran is going to be just sit and tight waiting for Prados army to jump in to their uh, plus three armor to mech army. It looks like we're going to be moving into game number two. Well, let's get into game number two. It is going to be Bisu versus Piano. Winner's going to face Sharp in the winner's match. In the red in the top right, you know who it is. It is Bisu. And in the bottom left, our yellow Terran player, it is Organ. So there it is. I was waiting to see if any Protoss players in the round of 24 were going to go for Ooh. an aggressive opener. And Bisu is going to be the first one. This is going to be a proxy gate. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be super, <clears throat> super fast scout by Bisu. I think he sent out the probe at 6? No, I think it was 5. How fast was it? Yeah, it was on 6. So this is a very fast scout from or fast probe being set out looks like he's gonna go for thinner gateway there's multiple options on eclipse you can do it right here you can do it to the right side of the natural you can do it in the natural you can do it in base but it looks like this is going to be the choice for for b soon now this is going to be the standard wall coming in from oregon and this is typical because you can go for that depot wall that goes all the way to the side of the base and it prevents zealots from getting to the bottom side you can build a factory there safely so we may see that as a reaction yeah this is going to be the proxy nine gateway by bisu and it looks like piano is expecting expecting pro will come soon and he's he's having that one SCP standing at the uh, high ground i should say the ramp but he will when you're doing uh the SCP block on the ramp you're pretty much eliminating one of the possibility proxy gate but Bisu is doing proxy gate if he's putting down the refinery at 11 I think he put down the refinery at 11 he was cutting a CB a little bit but it is good thing to have the factory really fast but how is he gonna be dealing with the proxy gate the zealot is gonna be arriving to his main base so fast yeah but with this wall he will have the option to put the factory below the barracks. So the Zealot will have a tough time actually denying the factory. So that is good news for Piano. As you mentioned though, 11 gas does hurt quite a bit. So we'll see how Piano deals with this harassment. It looks like, uh, is he rushing the factory or is he going to get the depot? He needs to get that depot up because once the Zealot gets in, he's in trouble. Yeah, if he's not going to be building the second supply depot, that means he's going to be making the... Oh, no. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. He was el eliminating one of the possibilities, the proxy gate, but Bisu is doing the proxy gate in this round of 24 game, the first game, and Piano is right now in trouble. Yeah, you can see that Bisu already did a, a decent amount of damage. He takes down the first SCV. Factory is placed... In an okay position, it is somewhat close to the barracks, so that's pretty good. But Piano is in big time trouble, especially since he cut an SCV to get this factory up and running quickly. So he's got to be very careful to not lose any additional SCVs. Really good micro so far. You can see the power of this wall. Zealous just flat out can't get to the bottom side. That was a such a, go a good attempt from Piano to save that SCV, but it still falls in the end. Yeah, it looks like the Cybernet score is done for Bisu already after making that 3 Zalot. Looks like the Dragon follow-up is gonna be arriving at Piano's main base soon. But the uh, Piano was cutting quite a lot of SCV in the beginning. He he was focusing on getting that factor really fast but eventually those uh, Z 3 Zalot aggression is buying quite a lot of time. I'm not sure how he's gonna be dealing with the uh, 3 Zalot with the follow-up 1 Dragon soon. Well, the goon is coming. I think he should barely be able to hold this. He has five marines. The vulture's gonna be popping out within maybe like seven seconds or so. It's gonna be very hard though because those zealots are super tanky. Six marines now. I actually like this choice from Bisu to turn around. Of course, he could have gone for it. He would have lost all of his zealots 100%, but he may have eliminated all of the marines, which is of course a pretty good trade. Now behind this, Bisu not being, not making 
any crazy move. Like you don't see Citadel, you don't see one base robotics or something like that. You don't see a Nexus. He's doing what you should do, which is put down the second gateway. Yeah, it looks like um, Bisu is not going to be committing too hard. And uh, will Bisu have that another Drugan popping out from? The yeah, he will have that uh, Drugan popping out of a uh, second gateway. And it looks like that Vulture will get denied. But at the same time, Piano is looking for a uh, great timing. He really wants to push out soon. The Vulture. Yeah, so Vulture is going to you know, help deal with the Zealots. However, what's the answer for the Goons? The Zealots are going to buy a lot of time and also deal a decent amount of damage to the Marines. Now, I'm getting a little worried because second Vulture means the tank is nowhere near done. He's just going straight Vultures. This is either either the move of the century or this is going to backfire completely because range is going to kick in pretty soon. And then there's going to be no answer for the Goons. Uh, Looks like... The zealot. That's great. That's great focus fire. As you mentioned, mines are now out. So the goons will have to micro their heart out if they want to push in. However, the hand has been exposed from piano that this is just going to be ultra follow up. Ooh, Ooh, look at that micro. Oh, no. Stepping on a spider mine. That is hurting him a bit. Yeah, and you can see that Oregon has now placed a bunch of mines right next to each other. So if Bisu gets a little cocky and oversteps his bounds trying oh. to trigger one at a time oh how did that get taken down this is so dangerous either bisu is going to get through and deal a lot of damage or he's potentially going to lose all of his guns you can see how careful he's trying to be don't doesn't want to move in too far oh like no that. gotta be careful it might trigger that two spider mines right next to that uh oh the bunker goes down yeah but oh my god that was so close to triggering Oh, he doesn't know that there's three sitting there. Oh, oh a zealot. Yeah, the zealot is coming in. And it looks like just by looking at the minimap and the observer has not shown, but we can see that there's going to be the star portal follow-up, but he's preparing for the dropship, but how is he going to be dealing with the natural? Oh. oh, you can see it, how dangerous this is. His goons are so low, but because Piano has not built a single tank, Oh, he's coming back with his vultures. Now a tank is finally going to be coming out. And now Piano should be able to clean this up. Meanwhile, those four vultures are still alive. So they could try and intercept these goons. Instead, they are just going to back off for now. So both players are going to get their gnat up and running. Bisu didn't take critical losses, but he did take a bit of damage. But he also, you know, harassed the mineral line a little bit. Vulture's going to try and run into the natural. May get some probe kills. And we'll be picking up three so far, four and five. Okay, right, total that, five. That was great from Piano. Not only does he get a lot Ooh. of pros, he does end up saving the Vulture. There's and DT the follow up. Wow. And the goons already cleared the majority of the mines. And there's no ComSat, there's no eBay. Look at this. Okay, Piano already knows what's up once you see those. Goons just suicide into mines. Okay, can he draw that DT into that mine at the bottom? If he can, it should wipe it out. Oh, it just barely survives. I think this is over because, yeah, he just now starts his eBay. Yeah, I think Piano was eliminating all the possibility in the early game and mid game right now, and he did not expect the Dark Temper was coming. And will he be able to defend? I'm not sure. He's also. Going for the counter drop inside of uh, Beast's main base, and this yeah. is going to be a messy game. Yeah, this game. Oh, oh, oh my, my gosh! God. That DT kills so many SCVs with the mind drag. Meanwhile, the goons are just going to suicide to make sure that these vultures get taken out. eBay completes, and something that we didn't consider that barracks that went down uh, at the natural from those goons. That means that an academy can't be built. So Piano's got to rebuild that barracks. Academies are, yeah, barracks isn't even done yet, so he still can't build it. And DCs are just going to non-stop run into this base over and over and over. <gasps> no, my mine drag. It ends up dying, but it clears the mines for the follow-up DT that's going to pop out. Up there it goes again. So that's going to be another DT running into the natural. Luckily, there's a turret up. But I think it is just barely out of range of saving the top side of the natural. So this DT is still going to be super annoying. Yeah, Piano is going to be having a, a tough time defending these 
three dark tempers, but at the same time he threw one of the dark uh, vultures at the main base. He used the dropship, but he's not gonna be doing too much damage at Beast's main base. But this is hurting Piano so much. Yeah, look at the supplies plummet. It's 33 to 56 now. He can't even hold the goons anymore. DTs almost get on top of that vulture at the backside. Look at how few SCVs he actually has. He's going to wipe out the entire SCV line. The barracks falls again, so still the academy can't get built. Yeah, finally Piano is going to be lifting up the command center. <clears throat> After a lot, losing a lot of SCV, but it looks like Beaster really wants to end the game. He's going to be constantly throwing one single Dark Templar at a time, clearing all the spider mines, but got to be careful not stepping on the spider mines. Yeah, he has no idea where they are, so he's going to try and go for that really slick goon micro, but instead just suicides that DT to his death. But now he's within range of the factory, and if he can focus down the units as they pop out, there's no chance of Piano coming back into this game. And with five goons on top of the factory, he's going to two-shot any unit that comes out of there. So this is going to be GG. Look at look how fast that tank basically dies. Yeah, that's going to be the GG. Ooh. Wow. Well. What a fantastic Beast's, uh strategy in the beginning. And also transitioning into Dark Templar as uh, while he was doing all those Dragoon Micro. Ex making... Piano to expect it's gonna be the robotic facility follow, but he went for Sirava Dune and clearing all the spider mines with the follow of Zealot and additional dragoons. That was an excellent move by Bisu. Well, as a Terran player, this is one of those games where you just want to pull your hair out because it's like I built mines, I showed him the mines, and he still went DT. And in, in what world are you building DT into mines? But in this particular game, it was a nice move because Piano started transitioning into the tanks and he knew that there was going to be a lack of mines after being used on the goons. So nicely done from Bisu. He's going to move on into our winner's match. So we're going to see Bisu versus Sharp. But before that, of course, we should be going into a break for a couple minutes and then we'll be right back. Oh, are we not? No, oh, I'm not sure. It looks like they're going to be Hot talking about uh, sex and more of an energy drink here now. <laughs> you know, actually, last week we were talking, me and Gypsy were talking about the Hot Six, and I went to the convenience store, and I did pick one up. Me, our Gypsy recommended the white one, mm. so I got that. It tasted pretty good. It had like a raspberry taste to it. I would, I would recommend it. It was not bad. Uh, have you had any of the Hot Six drinks? Uh, I don't think so. I, I usually drank those uh, energy. What is it? Monster energy drink and Rockstar one when I was in, when I was residing in California. Yeah, I think when I was on EG, we were sponsored by an energy drink company. I can't remember exactly, but Hot Six definitely very good. The King. I love the, <laughs> I love the name of the drink. Is that the one you drank? The, the King, the White? Yeah, one? I even oh, took yeah. a photo of it. I posted on Discord. I got the White, the King mm. one. They have different flavors, I guess. I think blue was like power. Oh. Red was force. Black, what was it? I don't know. Let me look at my phone. Into the rain. He's always chugging those things, man. Yeah, it looks like uh, they're explaining how the Hot Six tastes. <laughs> Let me look. I, I am bringing up my photo gallery right now on my phone. Yeah, so they have like, I guess, four different flavors, but they don't tell you exactly what the taste is going to be. Blue is power, <laughs> black, is, black is storm, white oh. is force, and red is punch. Oh, commercial time. Talk about it when we get back.
Rebellious connection? Hello, hello. Ah, 미쳐버리겠다. Hello, 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 hello. You're back. Hello, hello. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. I am hating. What's, <laughs> what's going on with my internet? Yep. Welcome back, guys. We did just see Bisu take down. Piano in a very, very dirty PVT, and now he's going to be facing off in the winner's match. It's going to be Bisu versus Sharp. Winner here makes it into the round of 16. So let's see, is it going to be a Protoss or is it going to be a Terran? Yeah, it looks like the map is going to be used in Hidden Track. Interesting. Yeah, we haven't seen many games on this map. I, I, have we even seen? Oh, we did. We saw crazy PVP last week. Me and Gypsy did. But before we get into that, top left is Bisu. Top right is Sharp. Now this is PVT. You've been talking about how hard Ascension was, and it seemed like Ultimate Stream was a great Terran versus Protoss map. But what about Hidden Track? What's your thoughts on this particular map? As soon as the the map was released, uh, Hidden Track, a lot of Protoss players do, did not like to play on this map because it is definitely hard to take the third base because even if you take the third base, Terran can just go for the dropship and just hurt their uh, third base worker count, uh, worker worker from the behind of the mineral. And it looks like uh, Beast is just gonna play standard, okay. Yeah, so for now, just an in base pylon. This could still be something like a 12 Nexus. We'll have to wait and see. If you guys watched the PvP last week, you could definitely see that this map with such tiny pathways can be a bit hard for Protoss to get on top of armies, so I think... Okay, one second. Uh, this is driving me crazy. Hello? Hello, hello. I am so sorry everyone. I'm not sure what's going on with my internet. But uh, uh. Alright, well we are back and it looks like Bisu did not go for 12 Nexus. Looks like it's gonna be a standard opener from Sharp also. Just gonna be you know, normal follow-up for him. Now, as I was saying, if you guys watched the PvP last week, there was issues with a, the attacking player trying to get the best angle onto the defending player. So I think if Bisu plays that style that you were talking about, where he kind of just tries to macro up and just run at you head on, it should be favorable for Sharp. Now, this probe is annoying. It's already taken down that SCB to below half health. It's within being three-shotted. Yeah, it looks... Wait, did he build a factory? No, I don't think so. And it looks like Bisu has gone with the Zealot aggression first before the Cybernetic score. So it looks like uh the probe will get picked off. Yeah. Yeah. So probe gets taken out. The Zealot pressure is coming in. I think the SCB spotted it. So he's gonna be. Uh, he he should have three Marines out in time. SCB already in position. Look at this nice tight wall. Zealot doesn't want to risk losing you know, a lot of its shield because once that's gone, uh, Zealot can... Yeah, uh, uh, looks like that first uh, Zealot aggression will get denied because Sharp immediately made that three, first the uh, three Marine early. And also, is he building a bunker? I'm not sure, but it looks like that scouting SCV is going to be buying quite a lot of time. Uh, you waiting? Hello, hello. 
Yep, you're back. I am freaking out. So behind this, it looks like Sharp is just playing normal. We got the command center going down at the natural. The Zealot didn't do any damage. It didn't take any damage either. It did force out a Zealot, so I guess that's going for him. Wow, another game where it's going to be a delayed DT follow-up. So it looks like Bisu has just planned these openings for the Terran players. And I really like this because I don't think that Sharp is expecting to see this build twice in a row. He did get to see it versus Piano. You have to keep in mind that the players that aren't playing are able to see the matches. So this is a bit of a mind game from Bisu, I think. And this, I think, will have pretty good success. Second factory going down for Sharp. And no upgrades being spun on that on that add-on. So mines are not going to be coming into play anytime soon. It looks like the Vulture is going to be out and it looks like he's finding a great spot to uh, put some spider mines. And finally Beast's natural is going to be saturated. And what is, yeah. what is that unit at the 3 o'clock? The unit at the 3 o'clock I think is just a, a Vulture. I think it is just sitting there and waiting. Temple Archive is about to finish so DTs are going to be popping out. Pretty soon, the Citadel and the Archive are split up, so that's somewhat deceptive. But I, I feel like if you scan the Citadel, you already know that this is going to be a Templar place. So I'm kind of confused at the split up Archive placement, but we'll see how it works out. Second gateway going down, so it's not just going to be one gate DT production. It's going to be a lot of DTs coming out, potentially. No Robo just yet, so if mines do come into play, third base could be denied for a long time. Yeah, it looks like <clears throat> looks like the stream is now settled and I'm sorry what is really wrong with the internet today, but we're trying to keep this uh, stream alive. And it looks like Sharp is gonna moving out with this uh, three tank, four marine timing, but at the same time the two dark temple is gonna be going to the top side as well and they're gonna be meeting up at twelve o'clock. Well, when Sharp sees this, it's going to be panic mode because as I s Oh my gosh, he doesn't show the DT. He doesn't block the pathing. Now he just waltzes in and there's no way Sharp's looking at his back. Oh, at the, his... Yeah, we can see Academy. This compensation is being added. Oh, he missed it with the Vultures too. Now, it's great that he has comsat, but he's going to scan for these DTs in the front. There's one, and that means that there's only one available now in his main. He has no idea. So he's about to blow all of his scans and lose everything at his nat and main. Oh, Look at this no. genius play. He hasn't attacked with the DTs in either spot just yet because he wants to force that scan out. Yeah, it looks like the Dark Temper is going to be doing some mind drag and not going to be killing uh, much of a unit. But at the oh. same time, the main base is now getting messed up. Does he have enough scan? I don't know. Yeah, he does have scan, but I feel like he did not set up the hockey. He has the enough energy to- Oh yeah, he's gonna be using the second scan here. And we'll be picking up one of the other Templar, but will he be able to pick off? Yeah, he will be picking up- Oh. Uh... Yep, so you are back, but... Sharp has taken critical losses here. He's lost so many SCVs. You can see that the supplies are somewhat even, but forcing out so many vultures, which you don't even really want, not ideal. However, Sharp did keep a lot of his a lot of his tanks alive. In fact, he kept all of them alive. So Bisu still is under threat, and with the DTs actually being cleaned up, there are scans available. Oh, he lost both of the DTs for one scan. And actually, Sharp might just lose here because he's lacked the goon count. Yeah, it looks like the dragon count is so low and I'm not sure how he's going to be defending this uh, three tank push. I, well, this base is just dead. And D Bisu is just rallying DTs, but they're just running into their death. And Sharp... What looked like was going to be a guaranteed win for Bisu because he, how else do you hold off DTs when two of them sneak into your main and you use both of your scans? But it looks like Sharp is in a position where he can just hold position all of his units and then go into siege mode. And there's no alternative for Bisu. He doesn't have 
something like Reaver to go for harassment. He's just now really completed his robotics. He doesn't even have scan or an observer out just yet. Look at this, sharp scans to see where the units actually are season opening. And now he pushes in. Vulture's gonna get into the main. As I mentioned, there's no observer. So once they get Ooh. set up, he can get into the mineral line. All the dragons will go oh. down and a, a single zealot and one single dark temper will not be enough to hold this uh, two vulture regression. But it looks like Sharp is not going to be... Okay, he's going to be using another scan and Beast will be picking that uh, Dark Templar and save that Dark Templar for uh, something else. Yeah, he saves the DT, so he's going to try and counter with just a small DT drop. Really, it's his only chance oh, to get back Goliath. to the game. Go yeah, Goliath's already out, so Sharp's going to be able to shoot it down. And the Vulture spots it, so he knows it's coming. And I saw a DT w or a turret was in the main. You can see it right there. So Bisu... I think once he sees this D or once he sees this turret set up, he's probably just gonna go all in goon speed zealot, and if it doesn't work, that's it for him. Yeah, looks like that uh, shuttle will get the D dark temper drop. Dark temper drop will get denied by the single uh, Goliath, and Beast is just gonna be stuck in one base mining for now. This is. And Sharp is going to be pumping out lots of units from those uh, factories. He's adding more factories at the main base. And also have more supply than Beast right now. Yeah, Beast is in trouble. With no Nat up and running, Terran is just slowly going to get farther and farther ahead. I guess what's good for him is he's had 5 gate for a while. So at least he can pump out a lot of units. But he's pumping out Zealots. And, uh, what really sucks about this map is that tiny ramp. Those zealots and goons are just going to funnel down, and Sharp is at the perfect range where he can just, you know, smash them as they come down single file. Mines are being set up everywhere. Really, all Sharp needs to do now is just build, uh, continue to build some depots near the ramp to just draw fire, you know, mess up the AI from the units actually coming down. Okay, yeah, looks like... if Beaser really wants to break that uh, front line at the natural, he really needs to kill those eggs, but... Those uh, neutral acts are gonna be blocking the path. Those dragons are pretty much clumped up, and now Sea Tank is gonna be focus targeting on all those single dragon and trying to find some uh, great target to do some splash damage. But no, oh yeah, looks like Sharp has the plus one attack now, and that's gonna be the GG for Bisu. Yeah, and Bisu taps out in a really nice play from Sharp. If you're any other Terran player, you probably just lose there. In what world does Terran? hold two DTs in their main with only one sc one scan available, also no turret. So bisu has got to be feeling like he slipped, let that one slip away. And Sharp, who we were talking about, has been slumping lately. He moves out in first, and in the game versus game oh, he looked really good. And now he gets a nice victory versus Bisu. He didn't get flustered seeing the DTs. So actually, Sharp looks like he's playing very well, and I expect him to do pretty well in the round of 16. Yeah, it looks like Bisu is really upset uh, with his play in the winner's match because he had the game. He had those two Dark Templars got inside of a Sharp's main base and used additional Dark Templars to buy some time at the natural of his base. But somehow Sharp was able to hold those two Dark Templars and Bisu could not hold his natural of that. Three tank timing. It looks like we're going to be moving into player's interview. A first player who's going to be advancing into round of 16 is going to be Sharp. Congratulations, Sharp. Congratulations, Sharp. It wasn't, it wasn't an easy group to advance in, advancing, advancing into the round of 16 as a first player in group E. Yeah, how do you feel? I'm happy to I'm, I'm, I'm happy to advance into round of 16 and recently I was not playing really well and also did not perform really well from the previous season so I prepare a lot and things just went well and I'm happy with the result. So despite looking at your play, a lot of players can ex uh, will start to have a lot of high expectations in the future.
picture of your game. 김태경 선수의 앞마당 쪽을 공략하는 어, 어, 그런 경기력을 보여주셨는데 좀 다크를 어느 정도 예상을 하셨어요. When you're playing Winner's yeah, Match, playing versus Bisu, there were uh, there were two dark times got inside of your main base, and you you were managed to you, you managed to defend the two dark times harassment when you were attacking Bisu's natural. So Sharp is saying that uh, he saw he saw the Beast's first game playing against Piano using Dark Temper. So I started to have a feeling that Beast might gonna use the Dark Temper once again in winners match. So I got my uh, compensation and prepared to defend that Dark Templar. 어, 경기 전 인터뷰에서 조기석 선수가 스스로에게 답을 찾았다라는 부분이 아무래도 그런 부분일까요? 어... 보고 경기를 풀어 나가자 이런. Looks like 걸까요? people are expecting that you found the solution how to win the game after you watched Beast vs Piano's game. 이제 그것만 하지 말자 마인드 컨트롤을 계속 했었었어요. 음. 그래도 그래가지고 uh, previously, 김경모 선수의 I used to reflect myself to pretty much you, uh, look at my own games and look at the replays and what what are my mistakes uh, what my mistakes were. But I think when I'm playing when I when I play the tournament, it is more important to have the better mindset and how I'm supposed to be approaching and to find a way to win the game. You're now in round of 16. There's a lot of Zerg players in round of 16. How... What are your plans? What are your What are your plans when you're facing all those Zerg players in round of 16? I do notice myself that I do lack quite a lot of stuff in terms of the Zerk matchup and I know that uh, Zero is such a great player and also won a previous ASL so I need to prepare more. Any words towards to your fans? I noticed that uh, a lot of fans were a lot of fans were saying you're not playing really well and playing poorly and I do admit all those words that fans were giving the advice to me. <laughs> oh, my brain is not working. <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not keep up. But he, he was pretty much uh, reflecting of his gameplay and looked at his previous uh, tournament games and decided how he should be playing in this ASL Season 11. And that actually helped him to play better. Yep, so thank you so much for the interviews. Now, most likely a commercial break, and then we're going to go into Gameo game versus Piano. Whoever loses there will be eliminated.
All right, so we are back, and we're going to be getting into Gamo versus Oregon. Loser is going to be eliminated, and they're going to bomb out in the round of 24. It looks like players have decided on a hidden track. Now, I watch a lot of Zero stream, and this map in particular has some crazy TVZs. Uh, Zero has crazy TVZ in, on hidden track, you said? Yeah, I've seen him and Larva go up against Rush quite often. And there's just non-stop fighting on this map. Like, Rush just attacks mm. tons and tons of bases all over the place. So it leads to really, really crazy back and forth TVZ. Yeah, I wonder how Gamma is going to be playing on this uh, ASO new map hidden track because... You know, the current trend is um, Zerg players is doing two hatch middles. Okay, looks like we're gonna be moving in to the game lobby and starting soon. Yep, so this is the losers match. Gamo versus Piano. Let's see who's gonna move on to face Bisu in the deciders match. Okay, in the top left, we have our red Zerg player. It is Gamo. And in the top right, taking a crippling loss versus Bisu earlier, it is Organ. You were talking a little bit about TVZ on this particular map. Yeah, I was trying to mention that uh, the current trend for Zerg is doing two hatch Mira against Terran. And always take the third base right next to their natural. Like for example, if he was taking the natural, he, he's most likely going to be taking the expansion towards to like either 12 o'clock or 9 o'clock side. But, you know, if you look at the map of hidden track, it might be easy to take the third base and have that uh, third gas saturated. But as as the, the, the game goes longer, how is it going to be expanding? Uh -oh. Yeah, it looks like this is gonna be the supply depot. Uh, sub two supply depot wall for uh, piano. And so I was mentioning that um, I, w I wanted to point out. I wanted to point out that how Zerk is going to be taking the fourth exp fourth expansion for the four gas and make tons of ultra with the scourges and using defiler in super late game. I'm a bit surprised that you told me that Zergs end up taking the close base because actually I would have thought that taking something like the natural at another main. Or just a standard main would be the best play for Zergs, but we'll wait and see what game O opts for. There is going to be that wall that we were expecting to see. Okay, game O. Thought for a second he might put down a 12 pool. That would be very, very weird. Now, Piano, as I mentioned before, in the past, this guy loved to go three factory play in the mid and late game, but he's changed his style completely. So I think that we're just going to see a standard command center follow up into just typical bio play with tons and tons of drops. I would be pretty surprised if a gas comes down relatively fast and we see something like a mech play. It looks like there's not going to be any uh, mech play by Piano. I don't see any refinery going up and it looks like finally Piano is going to be pulling that scouting SCV from that 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock as soon as he sees that first uh, drone scout. It looks like that SCV might get picked up. Never mind, it won't be getting picked up. Yep, so SCV is going to go for that cross scout. Is going to find uh, Gamo in the top left position. That drone has done a lot of damage. Piano might lose it, okay. Instead, Gamo, because he went so far into the base, is going to lose this drone. So the best thing he can hope for is to try and snipe that low health SCV and gas deal. At least he'll know the gas timing of Piano. If he just loses the drone, this is horrible for him. Wow, another three hatch play from Gamo. I'm so surprised. It looks like Gamo is feeling confident with his playstyle, I suppose, because we saw we saw the first game of uh, Gamo versus Sharp on Eclipse. He also has done three hatch reopening. He was playing well. It was a, it was a bit uh. Unfortunate that he could not have those Guardian ready to hold hold his uh, third expansion, but looks like this time he will be building the third hatchery inside of his main base. Oh, oh no 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 no, please. <sighs> Please, 
please, please, please, please, please, please. Hello, I hear something. Hello, yeah, we're here. All right, well, SCV is getting back into the main of Gamo, so it is going to see what the follow up is. There is no hydrogen anywhere, it is just gonna be standard Ling Muta. Now, behind this, we see that Piano is rushing into very fast plus one upgrade. So he's going to hit a really nice upgrade time. It's going to be super helpful versus him when the mutas pop out. And he's powering like a madman. You can see that he skimped out on a, quite a bit of, of Marines. Instead rushing out an academy also with this. But he can do that of course because he sees exactly what's going on. And Gamo is in a bit of trouble because as you mentioned mid base being taken from a lot of zergs. I feel like that's going to be so hard to hold with this particular opener. However, having three hatch production, maybe he can overrun the army with Mutaling, but that's so hard when Piano is most likely going to follow up with five racks. Yeah, it looks like as soon as, as, soon as a Piano knows that there's a third hatchery inside of a main mace, he will be going for... Was that an eBay? Was that an eBay into Academy and making additional barracks? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. You can see he's got medics pumping out, but it was a fast eBay rush too. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be a traditional plus one uh, weapon into a five racks opening for Terran. Yeah, he's going to be adding one extra soon. He's so far right now having four barracks, but he's also, he's also hiding the medic count. He's not showing his medic count. Yeah, nicely done from Piano to keep those medics back to kind of keep Gamo in the dark. Because right now, there's no Overlord overlooking the natural, so he has no idea. For all he knows, this could be anything. Sure, he's showing Marines right now, but it could be just a fake. It could be, I mean, it's unlikely, but it's possible. Now, those Lings, I don't know if he got close enough to see that medic. But Piano is going to be moving out pretty soon because those five Raxes in his main are going to be completing pretty soon. But you see that Gamo's getting up to 900 gas, so 9 meters is going to pop out pretty soon. And he is going to take another base as his third base. Or another main, I mean. Yeah, it looks like 9 meters is now going to morph soon in the next couple seconds. And also putting down the third, uh, third base at the 7 o'clock. And... Piano is not ready to move out yet. He does not have much of a marine count. It looks like he's going to be having about 10 marines with the 4 medics. But one medic, he totally forgot about it. So he's going to be moving out with 3 medics. So one of the downsides of Piano going for the fast academy and fast eBay is, as you mentioned, marine count is not huge. So if Gamo wants to engage this army before it hits critical mass, before it hits those critical upgrades, he needs to go pretty soon. Instead, the Mutas are just going to try and catch a few of these units. As they pop out, he finds isolated Marines, but doesn't really commit to it. I think that was a missed opportunity there. Let's see if he can redeem himself. At least he forces Piano's uh, units back. So that's great for him. It will allow him to buy time and get his third base up and running at bottom left. You can see the plus one's already done. That's incredible for, for uh, Oregon here. And it's going to be able, it's going to allow him to take down these muta lists that much quicker. Now, the real question for me is what's Gamo's follow up? Is it going to be continued all in mutas or is there a hydrogen somewhere this time? I feel like Gamo is going to be playing there, but I'm not sure what Piano is doing. He was, he was planning to do plus one, five racks opening, but his marine medic ball is pretty much stuck at the natural. He's not moving out. He's making Gamo to play comfortably. And sending those three hydrolysts towards to 7 o'clock. So if Terran just stays at main base and natural like this, all those hydrolysts is just going to be arriving at the 7 o'clock site and start ready to make, make into three lurkers soon. Yep, so you can see that the hydras are moving into position at bottom left. A lot of the times the lurkers start morphing at 8.15. So pianos move out to bottom left. That would be in vain if he moves in that direction. He really should just attempt to go to the natural. Looks like Mutas and Lings are going to try and engage. No, there's just way too many Marines and Medics. Wow, that is a huge army. I think if Piano actually went to top Ooh. left, he could win the game. No, what are you doing? He's morphing Lurkers out of, out of position at that ramp. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, uh, looks like Piano realized that he cannot really go to... 
go to 7 o'clock side so he's gonna be deciding to attack Gamo's natural but there are quite a lot of army armies that uh Gamo's natural there's gonna be total three sunkers with the one creek colony so uh one there i think there was two lurkers egg, two lurker eggs yeah there's gonna be two lurkers i hear borrowing yeah well Gamo did what he needed to do he bought time to get the lurkers up he didn't have to build a million sunkens sure three is a decent amount, but it's not an overcommitment. It's not like five or six. So, so far, so good for him. Looks like Oregon is going into tech quite well. He's got his two star ports going up. Science facility coming down at a nice timing. He's going to have one one upgrades pretty soon, about around the 10 minute mark. So that's going to be fantastic for him. He'll instantly be able to start plus two. But look at, look at game of supply it's already 90 to 100 so that's about as good as it's going to get mutas are going to intercept no they're going to have to back off for now but everything so far is going pretty well for gamo yeah it looks like gamo is on uh, such a great spot it looks like gamo is well, gamo really wants to go for a little bit of a trade here brought quite a lot of zerglings from bottom and on the top side and it looks like not much of a reinforcement remaining at piano's natural wow. oh no wow. All of those Marines and Medics just die, and all of Piano's units are out of position. You can see he's actually stemming across the map to try and get back in time. And these Mutas are not intended to deal any damage at this point in the game. So any kills that Gamo gets at this point is fantastic trades for our Zerg player. He also scouts that the star ports are done. You, you expect pro players to have them done. But if he was able to deny the starport timing that would have been fantastic for him he also sees that it's a six factory follow-up that means more than likely karen's going to be staying on barracks production for a very very long time it looks like um gamo is now confident and saturating that their uh their gas for a long time and he brought quite a lot of lurk lurkers at piano's natural but it looks like the plus one armor is kicked in and trying to flank from the both sides oh, but Oh no. Wow, that was a big overstep from Gamu, not recognizing the position that he was actually in. He loses four lurkers for not free, but he definitely didn't trade very well. And as you mentioned, plus one armor kicked in at the right time. Hold position lurkers. This could be what Gamu needs to get back into this oh, no. into this game. Oh, he based them into the lurkers. He baited. Oh, nice. no. Now, this is totally not looking great for Piano right now. He lost that another Marine Medic ball. And all those lurkers are borrowing at Terran's uh, bridge side. That means Terran is falling behind. Look at it. Oh my god, he's bringing all those three defilers. Oh my gosh, and Piano's using the using a radiate on these lurkers. Sure, trading an irradiate for a lurker is fine, but when defilers are about to be at your base, you need something to get rid of the defilers. And Gamo has, oh my gosh, he clears all of the lurkers. And now these defilers are out in no man's land. They don't have Dark Swarm just yet. I don't think he has consumed. If Piano's able to pick off these defilers, that would be a huge swing back towards Piano's favor. However, Gamo is still in a pretty good position. I saw Ultralisk Cavern went down at bottom left. And I can see that he has double evolution chambers. So he's starting to go into upgrades himself. It looks like Gamo, uh overextended at the Terran's bridge side and losing all those uh, lurkers before that uh, three oh. defiles arrive and it looks like there are just gonna be four dropship incoming four dropships this is typical piano play these days and he cleared out all of the vision of the zerg so there's gamo has no idea this is coming maybe the overlord caught it just barely and there's only four Scourge set up in position. You can see that the vessels are going to lead the charge. He's just going to sack the vessels to make sure that these drops get in. Oh my gosh, no reaction oh, no, from no They all unload. He didn't react, but this is going to be too late. All those uh, Marine Medic is going to be landed at Zerg's main, main base. And... Uh, yeah, Piano really needs to focus right now. He needs to he needs to spend all those uh, re resources. And, but these... Damage oh. is gonna be so huge. Oh my god. He killed every single drone because they transferred to the extractor. Now all Piano needs to do is, as you mentioned, macro behind it and focus down the key buildings. He doesn't necessarily need to care whether he kills units or not. Hydra did not a big loss for game. I would have preferred him to focus down that evolution chamber, but 
he already he's done massive damage. You can see his supplies plummeted from 120 down to 65. Maybe able to pick off that lurker. He might get this hatchery at the top two. Incredible amounts of damage with this drop. Yeah, it looks like Gamo really needs to pump out more of a Zerklings, but he's making more draw right now. He's is he really thinking that he can really defend this uh, marine medic drop? Looks like there's gonna be another two dropship at Zerg's, Zerg's natural. And... Look at this. Yeah, double drop is gonna deny the natural. And Gamo is really just gonna be mining on bottom left safely for now because the drops are just gonna keep coming. This is what Piano does. But you can see he is floating a lot of money. This is what happens when you start doing a lot of micro base play. So I would hope I hope he puts down a command center pretty soon or starts pumping out tons and tons of units out of those barracks. But he picks off three lurkers. They didn't get any kills either. So this is just Gamo falling apart. Yeah, Gamo is constantly making drone when he doesn't really need it right now. I'm not sure he he, he still does have the spawning pool, but he's not making zerglings. Okay, finally there's gonna be one dark swarm with the one uh, lurker inside and gonna be start mining but there's gonna be three oh dropship once again it's Ooh. just never ending this is what piano does this is why people say he's got such dangerous p uh, terran versus zerg he's just constantly all over the place now i do have to say if gamo cleans up this drop this is going to be about a 20 unit swing in gamo's favor so this will even up the supplies quite a bit. Let's see how much damage he can actually get done with this drop. Dark Swarm is available. Double Ultralisks are available. Nice Dark Swarm at the top side to keep the drones from dying. But he needs to get something on top of those Ultralisks. Yeah, gotta use oh that Dark Swarm before the oh. Ultralisk falls. Just barely in the nick of time. And now he oh is going to... God. Oh my gosh. An, er uh, an Eraser at the top. There's no Scourge available because he killed that Spire. Yeah, that is definitely... <gasps> and... Okay, that, that's a good split. He's taking minimal losses to this eraser that he has no counter to. He's also dealt with the drop. So this was about as well as it's going to go for for, uh, for Gamo here. Now, four Scourge are going to pop out, and now he's going to lose two out of the three vessels. So that was kind of a, a loss. I, I'll say it kind of even out because he did deal a decent amount of damage. But now Piano has his third base up and running. He needs to start thinking about taking bottom right at this point because Gamo still has four bases. Well, look at the worker count. And Gamo's supply count is about about 100 supply. I, even though he has been taking so much of a damage from the dropship, uh, I think he might be able to he might be able to hold this uh, push for a bit longer because his uh, his resource is now. Uh, coming in because all those uh, worker count is so high and he just needs to use a couple of uh, defilers and using dark swarm and buying some time here and there yeah honestly this is quite impressive from our, the, our zerg player to recover this well he also eliminated a decent amount of the vessels and because terran built four drop ships that keeps the vessel count low to begin with so overall this is about as well as you're going to defend as a zerg player so game of playing oh i hear play. his mind. oh my gosh that's like a every, huge plague. Yeah, he hits every single vessel, and now four Scourge pop out. He's got Lings to try and buffer the damage coming in from those Lings. Let's see if he can pop any of these vessels. Looks like no, but I see three dropships moving around the bottom side of the map. He and, and Piano's just trying to make it crazy so he doesn't notice this drop. Oh no, P uh, or Gamma is not preparing, but it looks like he did notice that there's dropshipping coming, but Marine and Firebat together? And holding the oh. natural with... No, he's not going to hold... Oh, no. Wow, Piano hits at the perfect timing, drawing out of the, all the units out of position. He busts the Nat. He busts this Nidus. He's gonna. He's now going to bust through the natural. This is 100% dead. Luckily, there's a Defiler there. Maybe he can Dark Storm down. Yeah, he does. But now, Spawning Pool's going to fall. Main's under Siege. He may lose critical buildings there, like the Hive or the Evolution Chamber. Oh, look at the supply. 160 to 75. Yeah, G Gamo has lost so many drones by the dropship and an attack at the natural. And it looks like the spawning pole also went down. He cannot make reinforcement. All those Zerglings are going to be uh, sacrificing just to hold the 7 o'clock natural. But how is he going to be dealing the main base? The main base has Hive, oh, uh, Defiler. Yeah, he lost the Defiler amount. Oh no, this is not looking great. He lost everything, except for the Evolution Chamber, really. 
He can't build lings. He doesn't have a Nidus to get any of the Ultralis up, up to top left. So you can see he's slowly trying to send it through the center of the map. Meanwhile, Piano's doing what you should do. He's expanding the bottom right. This tiny choke at the ramp doesn't help him because only one Ultralis gets up there. Just fantastic play. And I saw a drop going, yeah, down to bottom left. He's everywhere, man. He's just actually everywhere. Wow. Piano is using the dropship and finding the best uh, route to use those dropship before those scourges uh, intercept those dropship and it looks like Gamo did not realize that he did not pull that drone. It looks like finally he realized that he there was a drop at 7 o'clock and he definitely knows that he cannot keep up this game but it looks like yeah he's he seems really desperate. He knows that he lost this game but he can't really leave. Hello? Hello? 10 second disconnection is really pissing me off. Yeah, well, luckily you didn't miss much because all that really happened was Gamo kind of dropped his head in shame. He is really disappointed with that result and he is going to be eliminated, but you got to give credit where credit is due because Piano played absolutely out of his mind with the harassment and I was very worried with that Ling Muta counterattack and also remember the whole position lurkers did a lot of damage that I thought Gamo was in a fantastic position yet Piano he finds the opening he takes advantage of it and you can see what he can do once he starts making the game scrappy he's just everywhere in your face constantly and that's why Piano is such a strong Terran versus Zerg player these days. So that is going to be our player moving on into the deciders match. Of course, Bisu is there and waiting. So it's going to be Piano trying to get a little bit of redemption because we already saw Bisu take him down in the earlier series. So a bit of shenanigans in that game with the delayed DT despite seeing a mine opener. You know, Piano is going to be thinking about that. But before we get into that, of course, we are going to go into a quick commercial. And then we're going to come back and see who's going to be our second place finisher in Group E.
Okay, guys, we are back, and we're going to be getting into our final match of the day. It is going to be Oregon versus Bisu. It's a rematch of the earlier uh, series, but this time going to be on Polypoid. Mm -hmm. so what are your thoughts on TVP here? Yeah, I can understand from the Terran side that uh, Piano has been... Uh, he banned, what is it, uh, Polaris Rhapsody because it's a two-player map, of course. If you're playing on a two-player map, Protoss can usually do lots of crazy stuff like Proxy Gateway or Gas Deal or you saw my game versus Snow, you know, on Eclipse, like going 12 Nexus, doing all those crazy mind games. You don't want to be, you don't want to deal with those kind of stuff on two-player maps. So I can understand how Piano is banning uh, Polaris Raptory. And for the Protoss side, Bisu banned Fighting Spirit. Fighting Spirit is a, I should say it's a small map. Even though it's a 4 player map, because when you're playing that 4 player map on a Fighting Spirit, it, the rush distance is really close. Whenever Terran does timing attack, you're gonna feel everything is so fast. You, you must have lots of units to hold those Terran uh, timing attack. Yeah, but I thought Fighting Spirit was a guaranteed free win because you just sit on their third base forever. So it's a <laughs> shocking ban from Bisu here. Uh, but still, Polypoid is going to be the map. It's a good Protoss map. It's a good Terran map because of how many bases you can get. And this is going to be it, guys. This is going to determine who's our second place finisher in Group E. And moving into the round of 16, it is Bisu versus Piano. And... Okay, spawning in the bottom left, the blue products, this is Bisu. And it looks like I lost connection once again. This is driving me crazy. And spawning in the top left. Hey, we are back. Okay, in the bottom left we have our blue Protoss player it is Bisu, and in the top left, our red Terran, it is Piano. Now we saw an aggressive opener from Bisu earlier. You can be aggressive on this map, but more than likely it is just going to be forward gate aggression. And that looks like what we're going to see from Bisu. And this time, doesn't seem like it's going to be a 9 gate. He's just going to go standard 10 gate follow up. Really what we're just looking for is whether Bisu gets the first scout off. Not really a big deal, but, you know, if he can get into the main of Piano, that would be nice to uh, deal a bit of harassment onto the SCV line. It looks like, as you mentioned, uh, it's going to be a four gateway for Bisu, but what is Piano is going to be doing? I know Piano usually likes to do with uh, Rex expansion on a four player map, but looks like this is a tournament match and it's a best of one series, so... He wants to play a little bit safe, going for a barracks right next to his command center. Yeah, so it's going to be a typical opener from Terran. Not going to be going for gasless play, but okay, there's the gas for Piano. He does put it down close to 13 supply. Now, interesting play from Bisu here, because already second pylon coming up for him. So he's going to be delaying that goon for quite a while. More than likely going to be going into three zealot follow-up. That's going to put a lot of pressure onto Piano to hold this incoming Zealot push. It looks like Piano and Bisu, might, uh, their scouting unit might be meeting up at 1 o'clock. looks like Bisu is going to be the first one going to be responding, and Piano did not realize. So this probe does confirm nothing at top right. First, Zealot is moving across the map, and it is going to go directly to the main. And unfortunately for Piano, a last scout is going to hurt him quite a bit because he doesn't know what's going on. If he goes for a low ground bunker here, that means he probably only built two Marines. And, oh man, this Marine might just be running into death unknowingly. It looks like uh, there's one Zealot with the one pro is going to be arriving, and Piano will be immediately respond of that... Uh... Marine as soon as he sees, but all those are tickled by the probe, already lowering the Marine HP to 25 and delaying the factory once again, just like the first Re game. 
really nicely done from Piano there to deal as much damage as he did to that probe while also keeping the SCV alive both times. I can't believe he saved both the, all three Whoa. SCVs so far have survived. And he's going to take out the Zealot and he's going to take out the probe with one Marine loss. That's amazing defense. Yeah, that was a, such a amazing defense of how Piano react all those SCV when it was going into like lower than 20 HP. But uh, looks like oh. Bisu really wants to pick up some of the SCV that are uh, low HP, but I think he's committing way too much. He's going to be yeah, he, losing that Zealot. Yeah, he committed a little bit hard there. He did take out one SCV, so that's great, but you know he was sharking around for the other two or three that were dangerously low. Unfortunately, he doesn't find a connection, but he does end up hiding a Zealot at the top side of the map, so if he detects that a Vulture is out on the map somewhere, he may just go for a backstab, get as much damage done, now the Vulture is going to try and come into the bottom oh. side of the map. Oh, how does that SCV get in? Yeah, it looks like Bisu uh, missed Micro that probe just, just uh, when he was blocking that scouting SCV. But finally, finally Bisu is going to be uh, warping that Nexus as soon as the SCV gets inside of uh, Bisu's main base. It looks like Piano is going to do the same build once again. Factory expansion into Starport. So I wonder if Bisu is going to do a similar follow-up. So far, no Robotics or Citadel anywhere. Bisu, he is going to go for the Robotics follow-up this time. Not willing to go for the same build three games in a row. As you mentioned, Starport coming in from Piano. Really not a lot of defense for Bisu. Actually, that Vulture might get in. Okay, nice control from, the, from Bisu right there. Preventing the Vulture from getting in. Meanwhile, no range just yet, so he's not able to harass this marine line. However, look at how low some of these goons are, some of these marines are. Actually, Piano's in trouble because that Zealot is still alive. Yeah, oh my God. yeah Piano definitely doesn't... Okay, finally, he will realize that there's a one Zealot still alive. And it looks like it's going to be the same situation as the first game where we saw on an Eclipse. Dragon pressure at the Piano's natural. Yeah, and this is going to force so many SCVs off of the line. All of the Marines die, none of the goons die, and Bisu oh, no. has arguably the best micro in, in of all players that play Protoss, so these mines for sure are not going to deal that much damage. He's, oh, he almost gets in range of sniping that mine, but great control so far from Bisu, and definitely the damage has been done. It looks like those uh, vultures were able to lay down some of the spider mines, but the number of... Uh, Marine count is so low, and now finally Bisu is gonna have all those uh, four dragon and it's stepping on the spider mine. Oh no. Oh, okay, he's gotta be careful again because if he oversteps, he will lose some goons. Three mines are all pretty close together. Let's see if he can get a connection or Piano can get a connection. Everything so far looks exactly like the Eclipse game, so you know that Piano's thinking about that. Like, hey, is there actually DT follow up behind? But I'm looking at his main, I don't see a big block anywhere. I don't see an eBay anywhere. I, of course, there's no comp set anywhere. So this is, again, Piano playing with fire. Look at this, Bisu goes to build a pylon on the left side of the map and he's gonna intercept this dropship. If yeah, Bisu is realizing that uh, Piano is doing the same build and he's gonna have the Observer and two Dragoon just popped up from the gateway. And it looks like he wants to take the Dropship and got he uh Bisu really needs to be very careful with those uh Dragoon not stepping on the spider mines and accidentally kill his own probe. He killed the dropship. Somehow it died. Looks like the goon in the main. Yeah, the goon in the getting, main. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting the killing blow there. Meanwhile, Piano has cleaned up the goon harassment outside the front of his base, but he took a lot of damage. Even just having you know SCV's not mining efficiently up there, forcing probably a repair on the on the command center is a bit annoying. Only two factories for Piano, so really, Bisu can do almost whatever he wants, whether it wants to be Reaver follow-up, whether it wants to be a third Nexus. Observer's out, now he's going to push the issue. He knows that the tank count is low because of the drop, and he's going to pick Ooh. off the bunker, I think. Yeah, the number of a Dragon Count is so high and also doing the Mind Dragon making one of the Seas tank into the lower HP will get picked off. Oh no, the Seas is still not done and the high ground Seas tank will get picked off as well. Wow, there was just no micro reaction from Piano on that high ground tank and it also falls and now he has one tank. Oh no. He goes into siege mode but he's in range of getting shot. 
So that tank's also going to fall, and this is a disaster. It is not looking great for Piano right now. They're laying down some of the spider mines, but it will immediately get picked up by four dragons. But really looks not. like Bisu is trying to end the game here once again. He's not making he's not making the third nexus yet. Yeah, but we can see that a probe is in position to potentially build that nexus. There it goes. That was a nice drill to save the game from Piano, but he just doesn't have units. He doesn't have production. First tanks him come out. Now Beast is going to be pushed back because this is one. Oh, he's not. Oh, no. I think he's going to dive it. He's going to dive that tank. He knows it's low. He's got the observer. There's no bunker support. This is just yeah. going to be non-stop aggression. Wow. Piano, he goes into speed. Yeah, Piano is such in a bad spot right now. And it looks like it's going to be the three gateway Dragoon pressure into a river follow up now. But Piano only has one siege tank and Piano has been making so many marines it looks like the bunker will go down once again yeah bunker falls and he does lose two goons there but as a terran player constantly rebuilding this bunker and building marines that you don't even want is painful it delays your third fourth fifth factory potentially shuttle i i'm curious what's in this i think it's just zealots but it could be a reaver oh, or it could just be goons well, goodbye tank, and that's going to be Piano being eliminated by Bisu because there's no way he's losing this Reaver, and there's no way one tank is going to be able to defend this amount of units. So unfortunately, our Terran player is going to be knocked out, and Bisu, he's going to be moving on into the round of 16, getting a little bit of redemption from last season. It looks like every single tank, whenever it comes out, Bisu will be picking up all those things, tank. It looks like the river will be landed right next to the sea snake and not much of the uh, units remaining. And command center is also burning. Piano is shaking his head right now. He he knows that he lost his game, but he can't really leave. Yeah. So GG comes out and Bisu moves on, and that was clinical. And this is exactly why you don't want to get into a micro battle with Bisu because his micro is top notch, and Piano just not able to get the damage done that he needed with the drop to kind of get back into the game but the micro in the early stages with the marines versus the zealot that was actually perfect micro i'm a bit sad that piano wasn't able to transition into the mid game very well yeah it was a, it was a bit unfortunate how much of a marines that piano was making just to defend just to defend the dragon pressure he, he could have just put down the bunker so much of, uh, ahead of time and just defend it easily before the spider mine research finishes, but he wanted to play a little bit greedy and that just cost him that, that, that just caused him a loss there and same thing, same situation happened again just like the game number one from Eclipse Yeah, well, PVT it, oh, I think we're going to be going into an interview, so we'll wait for that. But yeah, Bisu is going to be moving on. Earlier, we saw Sharp move on. So we've got a Terran and a Protoss moving on. And actually, this does keep... Oh, here we go. Interview with Bisu coming up. So now we're done with the uh, ASL Season 11 Group E Round of 24. And we got the second player who's going to be advancing into Round of 16. This is going to be Bisu. Congratulations. Yeah, finally now, advancing into round of 16, you were not playing well from the previous season, but you made it this time. But last season, I felt like I did not prepare too much because I was overconfident that I will be advancing into round of 16 easily but that pretty much uh, made me to think how I should be playing in this ASL season 11 and I prepared well and it worked out really well this season. My group, uh, Sharp and Piano, they both are aggressive players so instead of playing passive, I wanted to play, change my playstyle and play aggressive and starts to play a bit messy game. And all those strategies that I've been, I, I prepared for tonight, it worked out really well and they, they probably did not expect it. 
저거밖에 안 하더라고요. 그래서 <웃음> Castro was asking uh, Bisu, yeah. were you expecting the dropship, the vulture dropship? And Bisu answers, Piano only plays one factory, one drop for uh, dropship play only. So it was a bit expected, uh, expected play by Piano. So Castro was asking, um, you did not defend well when Sharp was attacking you. Oh, <laughs> and your dragons, your dragons are also on a low HP and not fighting against those uh, pressure, the Terran's pressure. And Bisu answers that uh. His dragons were already on a low HP. It does not. It does not. It does not matter to micro dragon. So it, it's just fine to lose all those dragon and had to focus on the dark temper. But I do feel like a sharp, sharp defended really well when I when I had those two dark two dark temper got inside of his base. So now you're in round of 16. Uh, in round of 16, there's a lot of Zerg players are waiting, and you're really good at playing Protoss vs Zerg matchups, so we f we expect that you're gonna be climbing up a lot in this season. How do you feel? Even though a lot of people are uh, saying that I have a really good Protoss vs Zerg matchup, but I am I don't I don't think I am good as before, so I'm not sure I'm not sure about it. And he thinks that Zero will be picking him first in his group when when there's gonna be the group selection. So he's talking about his career that uh, his career he got eliminated in the quarterfinal in previous season. Maybe it was one or no, it was two seasons ago, I think. It was against Soma. So uh, he is pretty much um, looking at his past game and slowly want to improve. And he will try to do his best in the future games. Alright, so thank you, Scan, again for... We're gonna be moving into oh, next yep, matchup. There. Yeah, it's gonna be yep. April 13, Tuesday, 7 p.m. same time. It's gonna be Group F. Mini is a tier one player versus uh, tier four. So so Terran player. He's an amateur player. He has not played any of ASO games, so it's gonna be his first time climbing up into ASO round of 24, and we're gonna be expecting lots of uh, cool play from him. Yeah, and I think actually the matchup that is going to be the most interesting for me is Mong versus Miso because Misu, Miso a couple seasons ago looked very strong, especially his Zerg versus Protoss. But we haven't seen him in a while. I think he played an ASL team league, didn't have the best results in Mong. He hasn't had the best results lately either. So I think that should be a pretty even matchup. And then, of course, probably Mini's going to move into the winner's match. And I think the best scenario from the bottom side is to have Misu come out of there because his ZBP is deadly. But yeah, Mi Mini looks like he's a clear favorite here. Oh, looks like we're going to have another hot six being hmm. yeah, into the, the rain. <laughs> yeah, the caster is going to be talking about lots of uh, uh, products that we can see on the, the display at the front. But uh, when we... Well, Mm, go ahead. Well, we don't have to talk about the hot six because uh, neither of us have a hot six right now. Let's talk <laughs> about your ASL. Were you 
okay with your results. You looked pretty good versus Sock. Snow kind of, that was a bit unlucky, taking forever to get your third base. I so. am... I had a really good, great experience. I did not die super easy against Snow or Sock whatsoever. So uh, I think I played it really well even though I lost the game. But I do realize that uh, my optimization was poor compared to those uh, top tier plays like Flash, Rush, and uh, Light or Sorry. So uh, I, th if I listen to their uh, feedback and how I should be playing in the future game, and when I play uh, face when I when I play another uh, Terran versus Problem matchup, I think I'll play much better for the next time. Yeah, I know the foreign scene was rooting for you quite a lot, and it's always hard to take down, you know, or to, to go up against one of the favorites to win the whole tournament as your first round. The game versus Sock, both me and Gypsy thought for sure you were dead once Sock was setting up that contain, yet you had a heroic comeback and actually was taking control of the map, yet the one drop got Sock the victory. It was heartbreaking to see it get into your main because we knew you had the air defense too, but the race and Falks were just on the other side of the map. Yeah, I usually like to do uh, classic, the old side where a lot of Terrapins used to do, uh, Wraith and Skis tank and playing playing all those uh, Wraith into Skis tank into the late game. I usually do that with the 2 star port or 3 star port, but um, a lot of other Terran players who were practicing with me, they were complaining that I play too long. I, I, I play the game too long. I, I just drag the game too long whenever I can execute the game when, uh, whenever I can. But uh, So yeah, they were somewhat recommending, recommending me to switch my play style a little bit and use dropship more often. So that's why I was switching into uh, to start with dropship after making those two raids and clearing all those, uh, what is it? The vision, he, he had the uh, barracks at the front and having all those vision and using those uh, siege mode. So uh, yeah, I, I was switching into dropship, but you know, I was falling behind on the uh, economy and just things did not go well for me. <laughs> well, I think with a little more refinement, like you said, for sure we can see you in ASL 12. And maybe make it into the round of 16 or beyond. I'm sure you will take those Terran experts' advice to heart. So we, of course, are looking forward to that. Um, who was the second place finisher for Group D? I already forgot because as soon as you didn't make it out, I'm like, that I don't, was, I don't uh, care anymore. That was yeah. Shuttle. <laughs> yeah, it's Shuttle. So Shuttle looked pretty good, but I was surprised at how long it actually took him to take down Sock. Like, it didn't look like... Shuttle's really in good shape. Do you expect to see him make it past the round of 16? Shuttle? I yeah. think if he, if he... If if his group has a lot of Terran players in it, I do feel like he's going to be making it into a quarterfinal easily. Because even though the, his the spawn bomb ranking shows that Shuttle has really bad record and low, low rank on spawn bomb ranking on the list, but... He has tons of experience. He, he's the first champion of a ASL tournament, ASL season one. Yes, he yes, was I was, I was reminded <laughs> last week that he was the season one winner. But the Polypoid game versus Sock, I, I was a bit worried about his PVT. I'm kind of surprised that you're saying that if he gets a turn, uh, he's got a high, a high chance. It looked, looked like Shuttle's not in the greatest form, but it could have just been a bad day or maybe sock is stronger than i expect but overall we talked about this earlier this is about as balanced of a top 16 as you're going to get because it's five five four across the board i think it's going to come down to matchups as you say to figure out who's going to be moving into the round of eight is there anybody that made it through that you're surprised has made it through so far hmm I was surprised how Sorry was playing really well in his group B and beating Light, like executing executing Light in early mid game with using his own vultures and just pretty much destroy the just pretty much destroy the game the rhythm. Yeah, I, I do remember those games because I was watching it and I played Sorry on the ladder maybe a couple weeks ago, and he did the same thing to me. I just died to vultures. I was like, wow. 
this looks like my game versus sorry. So it's nice to see someone like Light just get taken down so easily. And as you mentioned, he did it easily. I was a bit worried that maybe sorry has some nerves because he doesn't play or he hasn't played in you know ASL that many times, but he looked really, really strong. And it looks like we're going to be wrapping up for today. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to be back on Tuesday. It's going to be Group F. We're going to find out who all of our top 16 finalists are. And then I think there's going to be group selection, not that day, but later on. So definitely check that out. So for me, for a scan, thank you all for watching. And we'll be back on Tuesday.